Hi, this is Faith McDonald. I'm here with another Faith on Freedom video blog. Today I want to talk to you about the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. It's coming up in November and it will be the 20th International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. This has been going on for 20 years and is still kind of an open secret. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about the history of what we call IDOP. Uh, and uh, to do that, I want to quote to you something from the late Charles Colson, Chuck Colson, the founder of Prison Fellowship, who said, No Christian should sleep well at night while our brothers and sisters are being martyred. Um, Dr. Colson died before ISIS began its rampage in the Middle East, but he would say the same thing today that he said about the Christians in Sudan, the Christians in Pakistan, North Korea, China, um, about ISIS, that the depth and extent to which Christians are being persecuted um, should not allow us in the West to rest until we have done everything that we can to help them. Um, and once he said that, those of us who were working on the day of prayer for the persecuted church hoped that having this day would awaken others to similar sleeplessness over the martyrs. Can you tell me, do you ever suffer insomnia because of the persecution of your brothers and sisters around the world? Do you belong to a church that has ever uh, commemorated the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church? I was part of the coalition that created IDOP, and this happened uh, in 1996. We first met in January of 1996 and worked on putting this day together. And what was so special about it was that it was not just a day for American churches to pray for persecuted Christians around the world. It was a day where Christians all over the world prayed for other Christians all over the world who were being persecuted for their faith. So, for instance, we had Christians in Pakistan suffering from persecution who were praying for Christians in Sudan. We had Christians in Sudan who got together on that day and prayed for Christians in North Korea. It was really an amazing experience. Um, so that first day of prayer was in September 29th, 1996. And uh, after that, it was changed to later, uh, November. But that was the first one. Two years later, Congress passed the International Religious Freedom Act, um, which as I talked about in my last blog, helped to give tools to people who wanted to do advocacy for persecuted Christians. But as you know, prayer is the most important thing. Prayer should be before everything we do and after everything we do. And one special day set aside to pray just for persecuted Christians is not asking too much, considering the persecution that they're going through. Um, I wish I could say that the persecution has lessened in these 20 years. It's not. It's actually increased. But we have these ways of doing advocacy and praying for our brothers and sisters, and we should make sure that we do that. Um, I do want to read to you another little thing here about the, the history of the persecuted, uh, the day of prayer for the persecuted church. After the 1997 commemoration, that was the second year when 50,000 churches participated, IDOP was still all but ignored by the news media. Um, and you can imagine that that is still the case today. But one person who did raise this issue was the late great editor of the New York Times, Abe Rosenthal. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal called the plight of persecuted Christians Another Kitty Genovese story, and if you don't know what that's referring to, you need to Google it and find out. But it was a story of keeping silent in the face of evil 
that had haunted him for years, and likewise the silence over persecution of Christians around the world was haunting him, a Jew. So it should even more haunt us. So I've talked about haunting and about insomnia. Um, and both of those things should be happening to us as Christians when we think about our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted. Um, when you do start to pray, you realize that not many people who pray just pray. Christians who pray believe that if God is God, he can change the situation by himself. He really doesn't need our prayers. The prayer is to change us. So uh, what has happened is people pray and then God shows them what he wants them to do for persecuted Christians. So let's get on with it. Um, this November it first will be the day of prayer for persecuted Christians, IDOP. And if you need any information, if you want any help, please contact me at the IRD. Look at our blog, juicyecumenism.com, or talk to uh, us at info at theird.org. Thanks, and keep praying for your persecuted brothers and sisters. God bless you.